Hey, this is Josh for Retool.net, and in this video, we're going to be talking about the new Creative Cloud 2017 updates to Premiere Pro. So let's take a look at some of these updates and some of the small features that may not have been covered in detail on some other sites. I'm going to open up a test project I have here, and we're going to start with a very simple change, but it's also very powerful, and that is project locking. So this is one that hasn't received a ton of press. So if we go to Premiere Pro CC Preferences, we can go to the new Project Locking tab. And you can enable Project Locking. It's basically a preference for your user and set a username. Now this doesn't have to be your Creative Cloud login. It could just be a name you want to be referred to as. So I just typed in Josh. And what this does is if you're browsing through Media Browser, to projects, it will actually display a warning telling other users that you have this open. Now let me show you what that looks like. If I click OK, and I go over to Media Browser, you'll notice I'm at the directory where I have my project. And you know it looks more or less the same as it did before. But if I hit tilde to reveal all of my columns, there's this new column. It probably won't appear by default. And if it doesn't, you can click on this little menu right here and go to edit columns and search for one called bin locked and check that not the one called locked but the one called bin locked check that hit OK and you'll see that it says bin locked by Josh now I am Josh and I'm the same user so it won't give me that warning but if I was another user it would now what if you're not using media browser I don't usually use media browser to open projects for instance so let me show you what it does at the finder level if I go to that project, you'll see I have the project here. It's called Creative Cloud 2017. But right next to it, there's this file called .prlock. Now, what this does is it's sort of like a sidecar file that lets Premiere know that this is a locked file and will give the warning to other users when they try to open it. Now, if for any reason something should get orphaned, meaning that for some reason you can't open it on your system or anything like that, I haven't had this problem, but if it were to exist, you could merely try to reopen the project on the machine where you're having the problem, and hopefully that will solve it. But if not, you can manually delete this .pr lock file, which should solve the problem as well. So that's project locking. It's just a way to keep other users out of your project when you're in it and hopefully keep people from overwriting each other's work. The next thing I want to talk about is closed captioning and really just captioning in general because there were some updates to open captions as well in terms of formatting and new styles that are supported. I'm not going to go much into that, but what I am going to go into is the new ability to edit your caption duration right from the timeline. So I'm just going to create a new caption. I'm just going to click on the new item button here and go to captions and I'm gonna hit OK because it's reading my sequence settings and I'm just gonna select whichever type I'm gonna hit OK and I'm gonna drag this captions file right into my sequence now the way this used to work is that you would have to go to the captions panel type your captions here and also figure out your ins and outs and all of that here and it was cumbersome to say the least so I'm just going to do captions 2, captions 1, and I can still do it the way that I was doing it before, but the much easier way to do it is I can actually just drag and drop these captions and make them align with whatever audio I need them to. So I can just drag that out, and if I want to make one longer, I can just come in, move that down, just like I would with any other video clip in Premiere. It could trim and it's so much easier to be able to edit your captions this way. Now, I don't even really need to use the captions panel anymore. I can actually just right click on the caption file itself and click on add caption and now I have a new one created and of course to change what the text says I would have to go back in here but if I just need to lay out rough blocks and uh, then come back later to type that text, I can do that as well. So now you'll see I have captions one, captions two, captions three, and it's so much easier to move these around and edit their durations than it was having to sort of scrub the in and out dialogue like I would have done before. The next improvement in CC 2017 is the improved After Effects text templating. 
Now, the features are sort of more or less the same, but the way it works is improved in that the project from After Effects can be a self-contained capsule file. Let me show you what I mean by that. Basically, the advantage you have here is that you can pass off the text template without the user having access to all of the files that it might be accessing. So I'm just gonna tab on over to After Effects 2017, and I have a simple text template organize its two lines of text and two pieces of footage. Now, this isn't really showing any new functionality. In fact, it's no new functionality at all. What it is showing is the new workflow in terms of the AE cap file, which is sort of like a capsule that will collect all of your footage you're using so that you could hand off this project to anyone without them needing access to the media it may be referencing. So I have these two MOV files here, and if I wanted to use the old workflow for uh, an editable text template, I could, but there's a new workflow as well to select the composition and go to File, Export, and there's this new option that says Composition as Text Template. And I'm gonna just select Text Template, Template version, so this is more or less the version I'm gonna bring into Premiere, but not really the editable version. And if I click on save, you'll notice it's gonna copy files. Now you're not gonna see these files in a directory or anything like that. You'll see when it's done that it's essentially zipping them into this AE cap file. And I'll show you that in Finder in a second. So it copied them, and then this last step will take a little bit, and I think that's because it's essentially zipping up these files in forming this new AE cap file. So yeah, it took quite a while there, but if I go over to Finder and take a look at my comps folder, you'll notice there's this .ae cap file, which is now 530 megs. Now, from a file size perspective, this isn't great. If, say, you're only working on your own composition on your own server and you always have access to the media, but if you need to be able to hand this off, this is really convenient to have this sort of zip file. So now, if I go back to Premiere, go into my project panel, and I drag in this AE cap file, it's gonna do the importing of the After Effects composition by connecting to the dynamic link server. And once that loads, I'm just gonna click on text template, select it, import it, and I could drag it right into my timeline. And you'll notice it has my two pieces of footage. And I can go under my effects control, master, and just change this to person's name and person's title. And there it is with the piece of footage baked in. If I shut off the footage below, you'll see it a little bit better. Now the next feature I wanna talk about is simply a usability enhancement, and that is the ability to create sequence presets from already created sequences. So here I have this 5-1 sequence, and I'll just show you how it was created and speed that up. As you can see, it takes quite a lot of time to set this up. Now this is how I set up my multi-mono 5-1 sequences if I was given 5-1 splits from an audio house and channel one and two going left and right to one and two, three and four doing the same, five and six, etc., and then seven and eight being the stereo channel. So let's say I have this and I already created this and now I realize that I use this sequence type all the time and I wanna create a preset. Well, before you just have to redo it, but now if you go under this little menu right here, you can go to create preset from sequence and just type in something like Apple ProRes HQ 5.1 and I usually like to copy the same thing to the description and hit OK. And now when I go to my new sequence settings, you'll notice under custom that I have this sequence created called Apple ProRes HQ 5.1. If I hit OK and I click on this new sequence, you'll notice it inherited all of those audio settings, all of those tracks, and basically everything I need to get going with my 5.1 audio relay. So it's just a nice usability enhancement that makes that a lot quicker. The next thing I want to talk about is the new keyboard shortcut editor. And if I go to Premiere Pro CC, 
keyboard shortcuts, you'll notice that this dialog has been totally overhauled. Now, if you wanna use it in the same way you always did, you can more or less do that. So you can search for what the shortcut you're looking for is and still type things in the way you would have in the past but you can also see things with a graphical representation. So this is the default view, but let's say for instance, I want to add the modifier of shift. You'll notice that now I hit the shift key on my keyboard that visually I'm seeing all of the shortcuts that are using the shift key. I can do the same by adding, let's say command. So now I'm seeing things that use shift and command as their modifiers. Now I can also use drag and drop to assign shortcuts. So let's say I want to also assign the razor tool to shift command C. Now I don't know why I'd want to do that, but I can do that just by dragging and dropping. I got this warning saying it was already in use, so I'm gonna hit undo, but you can do this sort of thing by dragging and dropping now. You can also click on a letter, let's say the letter S and see what has been assigned to the letter S with all of the different modifiers just by scrolling down this list on the right. So there's a lot of things that you can do with this new dialog that makes it nice and easy. You can also hit save as to save your keyboard settings, but you can also copy them to the clipboard so you could save all of your custom settings to say a text document or an Excel document for quick reference. So a lot of new features in here. I'm not gonna spend a ton of time in this new dialog box, but it is much more feature packed than it used to be. And if you're coming over from Avid or Final Cut 7, you'd be used to more of this type of dialog box and we finally have it. The last thing I wanted to talk about is the new global effects mute switch. Now you may not see this by default, if you don't, it's this button, but you can get to it by clicking on the button editor and you'll see this little FX button. If you mouse over it, it says global FX mute. If you mouse that over to your program window and leave it there, you can quickly shut off all effects. So in this sequence, I have a lot of sort of gratuitous, horrible effects. I have an adjustment layer with a Lumetri look on it doing that. Underneath that, I have this layer with a beautiful mosaic and this layer I have the top footage is being keyed out to reveal the bottom footage. Now it's, it's horrible, it all looks gross, but if let's say I love this look and I have a client in the room and things just aren't playing back real time and I need things to be sped up, usually this would just be sort of the Lumetri looks you'd be shutting off, but in this crazy example, I can just shut off my effects globally. And when I do that, you'll notice that my Lumetri look is now off, so is my crazy mosaic, and so is my key that would reveal the footage underneath it. So it's just a quick way to shut off all of your sequence effects to maybe speed up playback. Let's say if you were in effects mode and now you wanna switch back to editorial mode and things just aren't reacting as quick as you wanted, it's great to have this switch finally to speed things up. So that's all I'm gonna to touch on in the new Premiere Pro CC 2017. There's a ton of other little enhancements in there, but those are some of the more important features that I want to touch on. Now, of course, there is the Team Projects beta, which is sort of the major feature, but because it's in beta and it's only limited to people on the team license of the Adobe Creative Cloud, it is sort of a limited feature at this point. Hopefully we'll get to test that out and do some videos on that in the future. If you have any questions on the stuff I did demo, please let me know and I'd be glad to try to answer them for you. If you like this video, please subscribe to the channel and please check our blog for more similar tutorials and articles. Thanks again.